A major joint venture announcement in the commercial space industry. The companies involved say it will revolutionize air traffic control, saving airlines billions and saving international travelers time. Megan Hughes is in Washington right now to explain how. Megan? Hi, Emily. A uh, quick answer. They are taking it into space. We are talking about satellites here, specifically a company called Iridium, the second biggest satellite provider. Now, this system with receivers that will be built by Harris Corporation will track aircraft's time and position from space, which isn't done right now, and that's expected to help on routes over oceans and other areas that right now have no access to ground-based radar. Right now, that problem causes planes to actually fly 10 times farther apart when they're flying over oceans than on land. So this should enable some more streamlined routes. So it's basically going to save fuel both in their takeoff and landing, as well as allow them to have optimized routes across oceanic regions or across mountain re regions where they can't fly as densely populated air traffic lanes. So bottom line here, with better tracking, Iridium estimates that airlines could save somewhere between 6 and $8 billion on fuel costs from those better routes over the course of 12 years. Emily? So, Megan, this is a joint venture. Who exactly is involved? Uh, well, the entire venture is called Arion, and it, this is interesting, this piece by piece. SpaceX is going to launch the satellites made by Iridium that I mentioned, and this is all part of Iridium's next constellation. That's 66 sa satellites costing $3 billion. Those launches start in 2015. And then now, the announcement today, they're going to be hosting the receivers from suppliers like Harris Corporation. So they'll actually be mounted piggybacking on the satellite, but perform a separate function from the satellite itself. Now, Emily, these are otherwise known as hosted payloads. And today's announcement, the largest and most expensive one to date, the first com customer that they announced today, a Canadian company. So Canada is going to be the first to use this. But Harris Corporation says they do expect that FAA will follow by the time the satellites actually launch around 2015. <laughs> Emily. How does this fit in with the FAA's move to, to next generation technology? Uh, well, they say that it's complementary. I asked Bill Gatt Gattle from Harris that, who you heard from there. He says the FAA is requiring technology on all airliners by 2020 so that they'll be tracked by GPS and then broadcast that information on a radio frequency. But the problem is that's still going to be land-based. So this system, space-based, would augment that. Again, right now they don't have any contract with the FAA, but they say they did consult with them uh, in, in putting this all together. Emily. Meg Megan Hughes in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much.